guys, it's me, and today I'm here with a new deep dive for you guys. I know, I know, I know. It's been a while since I've made a video in general, but I thought that, hey, it's been a minute since I've posted. Let's come back with a bang. So today we are going to be doing a deep dive into the Bi Sister Scandal, also referred to as Sister Geddon or Dramageddon 2. So a few months ago, I talked about Dramageddon and how it is still relevant today and the legacy that it still carries on. And I mentioned in that video that I was wanting to discuss this incident here by Sister and talk about its relevancy, its legacy, and just what exactly happened and do a deep dive into it. I also plan on doing a deep dive into Breaking My Silence, also referred to as Carmageddon or Dramageddon 3. Why these two particular parts of drama have three different names, I am not entirely sure why they do. They just do, and we're just gonna roll with it. But also, life has just been wild, because after I did the first deep dive, retail hell happened and everything, because I work in beauty retail, and holiday happened, so that was a thing. And then at the start of this year, um, yeah, my health decided to take a turn, so I have been a bit out of commission a little bit to a degree for about two and a half going on three weeks, so yeah, I'm doing a lot better now, by the way. So if you watched a video that I posted on my music channel, I did talk briefly about my health and everything but just to give you guys a cliff notes as to what happened to me after I think it was like the second of the year I got a stomach bug and that persisted for nearly a week once that cleared up my nerve problems kicked in and my back and arm started bothering me and today is the first day that my arm has just felt a little bit sore so we're making really really good progress so I'm hoping that within like maybe a week, I'll be back to normal. I am hoping, I am hoping I go to work tomorrow and then I have four days off in a row, which to some people might sound a little bit alarming, but don't you worry, don't you worry. I work three days in a row, get a day off, and then I work another day. And that's as far as I know my schedule at the moment. Hoping I'll be able to get this video up on Monday for you guys, because I know that this is gonna require a lot of editing, because I'm gonna do with this video like I did with the Drama Get In One video, and that is that I'm going to do this sit down portion here, but I'm also gonna be doing a voiceover portion as well. I'm also gonna include like different clips and photos and things like that. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff going into this particular video. So I'm hoping I can get this video up in time of filming this on Thursday and this video needs to go up by Monday. Oh girl. But before we dive on into this video, if you guys are new here to my channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. And also while I'm down there, definitely give this video a thumbs up because that'll help me out a lot. All my links are down in the description box below, which are the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and my music channels. So definitely check me out on those places if you're interested. And let's go ahead and get started. Do you want to go ahead and preface this before we start digging into the information and talking about this whole thing and whatnot? I do have to give some disclaimers, we gotta do some housekeeping real quick and everything. And that is that I have a script here. So if you see me veering off to the side, that is because I'm reading off my script so that way I can stay on course. I'm gonna try to minimize my rambling as much as I possibly can, but I am Southern, storytelling is in my blood, so rambling is bound to happen. The second bit of housekeeping is probably the most important bit of housekeeping, and that is that I am going to try my best to remain as neutral as possible with this particular story because I want to just relay the information out to you guys. I'm not trying to put too, too much of my own personal opinions and thought processes into this particular story. I'm just here to relay the information to you guys and relay how it's still relevant to this day and how it's still affecting things in present day. That being said, however, there are probably going to be some moments in which I'm going to peek behind the curtain and give my two cents and everything, so there's also that. Now, I also want to mention too is that I'm going to be relaying this information with the knowledge that we had at the time. I know that there have been certain developments that were talked about during this incident that later got proved, but in this moment in time, we didn't have that full bit of evidence, and I'm not going to like further discuss those things in this particular 
story and whatnot we'll do that in a later video and those are more so in kin with the allegations of James Charles behaving very badly with underage boys now we all know that these have actually been brought up again since this incident and whatnot and have been proven but at the time it was just like hearsay there wasn't that much information about it at the time there wasn't that much going on about it and everything it was mostly just rumors at the time and that's how we're going to be treating it in this particular video because i will discuss that stuff in a later video because i do plan on doing a deep dive into james charles and everything in regards to him and we'll, we'll do that bit of deep diving when we do that so I just want to make that clear that yes I am aware that those crazy things happened but we're not going to be discussing those things in this video and if it seems as if I'm glossing over them that's because I'm waiting for a different video to fully dive into that because that's a beast of its own so now that the housekeeping is done let's go ahead and get started with introducing the parties involved starting out with Tati Westbrook the upset vitamin mom. Tati is a household name within the beauty community here on YouTube. She got her start in 2010 and cultivated a massive following over the years due to her chill nature and in-depth reviews on products and her product knowledge. For a long time she would post Monday through Friday and had multiple series that she would post videos for, but she eventually switched to posting less often after her brand Halo Beauty started to really take off a year after its launch in 2018. She also went to launch a brand called Tati Beauty in 2019, but eventually closed the brand down in 2021 due to troubles with legal battles and the Demi Lovato. She still creates content on YouTube and is the only person that I actually keep up with when it comes to those involved in Bi Sister today. I started watching her back in 2015 when she had about 800,000 subscribers thanks to her reviewing a $90 Louboutin lipstick that kept getting recommended to me and I've been following her ever since. And the final person involved in the incident, James Charles, the sister that no one wanted. James is or at least was a powerhouse within the beauty community on YouTube. He got his start on YouTube in 2015 and was part of the wave of creators that brought Instaglam makeup over onto the platform. His talents at his age really set him apart from most creators on both platforms. He had a viral moment in 2016 when a post of his blew up from when he retook his senior photos since he didn't like the lighting in the original photo and brought his own ring light to the shoot. His career began to take off from there, from being the first cover boy in 2016, a massive name within the beauty community, to launching a very successful James Charles palette with Morphe in 2018, to being a host on a failed YouTube original series, and eventually launching his own brand, Painted, in 2023. He's led a pretty successful career in his young life. He's done way more than I probably ever will and I'm four years older than him. James and Tati would become friends in 2017 after Tati decided to take him under her wing and kind of be a mentor to him after he started rising up on not only YouTube but the internet in general. Tati had a much larger platform than he did at the time and was just going to advise him on how to navigate the world of being a content creator because being a content creator is not an easy job. I mean me, I, I don't, I can't consider myself really much of any type of creator because it's just like I have barely a following and everything whatsoever i mean like yeah there are times when a reaction video on my music channel can get like several thousand views but i don't have like a substantial following and everything those people aren't following me those are people just randomly coming across my videos but tati has people that are following her and she has a large amount of people that are following her and james is starting to get that himself and she's been in the industry much longer than he has so she had been on youtube for a very long time she hit a million subscribers in 2016 so she has been around the blog for a long time she knows the ins and outs of the industry and she can help mentor him and help him navigate this world because 
the world of being a beauty creator and just being a creator in general can be really vicious. It can be very intense and it can eat you up and shit you right back out. And she wanted to protect him from that. And this partnership, if you could even call it that, wound up blossoming into a beautiful friendship between the two. Now, some would say that it was a bit strange how a woman in her mid-30s could become like very close friends with a 17 year old but at the time i was 21 years old when the two of them were good friends that was a long time ago i'm 28 now i'm i would say i'm approaching 29 my birthday's in june so it's still a little ways away from now but still it'll be here before we know it i'm pushing 30 kids at the time though i was 21 so it's just like i'm thinking to myself like oh that's not that big of a deal and then too also i'm looking through through the eyes of someone who has siblings that are like 14 and 12 years older than me but like i said looking back at it now at my current age it's just I'm like yeah that's a bit odd but all right as time started going by they started appearing in each other's videos more often they started like appearing on each other's platforms in general more often they were just having a great time and just being the best of friends and whatnot and showing it to the world and a lot of people again some people thought that it was strange that this woman that's in her mid-30s is so close to someone that is like still a minor but they were just so close together and their chemistry was really great and also it really helped out james's reputation because i mean like james i mean even as a teenager he didn't have like the cleanest reputation because i mean like he was a dumbass kid on the internet and whatnot he said and did crazy shit on the internet as a teenager and so some people were just not about him and were trying to cancel him as a teenager when in reality it's just like he's just being a dumb teenager he's just being a dumb kid like he can grow and learn from that and everything like he he's a child he's a, he's a literal child but because he was friends with Tati not only friends with her but best friends close friends with her that really helped his reputation because she already had this very pristine reputation within the creator space and so people were just like if we can trust Tati's thoughts and opinions on products surely we can trust her on her thoughts and opinions on people as time went by james started rising to fame and naturally this rise to fame would expand his circles and grant him bigger opportunities like working with different creators of different sizes particularly larger creators and even working with celebrities and through this he even started bumping shoulders with people throughout the industry like different brands and again those creators and celebrities and one of those people was jeffree star now little did we know that him bumping into him and becoming good friends with jeffree would soon open up a portal of chaos that none of us would ever see coming you see in james's rise to power in the industry came his ego james suffered from what a lot of people who get a lot of power at such a young age like him suffered from and that was not being checked by those around him it seemed like a lot of people in his life were enabling him to behave in certain ways and letting him get away with certain actions and it really started to show as time went by i mean he was demanding he was a diva he would use his powers were evil okay that last one is a bit of a stretch but he would use his name and platform to get things done his way and one of those things was him allegedly using his platform to seduce straight men all the signs were showing that he wasn't just about to go out of control but that he was going out of control but he had Tati Westbrook in his corner to back him up and to defend him and also he had all these big opportunities coming his way as well and he also had this massive fan base of little girls to defend him he was becoming more and more powerful like 16 million subscribers powerful which this was unheard of within the beauty space here on youtube people were worried that like the fame was starting to get to his head and that he was going to go absolutely out of control with power but people were also becoming scared for themselves because 
this little twink is going to overtake them. See, back in these days, beauty creators were lucky to get past 10 million subscribers. Most of them would teeter around like the three to seven million mark. Not only that, but he was working with celebrities on a regular basis. His palette that he did with Morphe was the best selling palette at the time and was constantly selling out. He had a clothing line which was basically like a glorified merch store and everything and it's just bleh, just sister apparel was just weak as fuck i liked the cuts of things because i am a sucker for crop tops but in terms of like what the products actually were it was basic as all hell and he even had his own youtube original show which i did not get whatsoever. No one else was getting these kinds of opportunities, but he was. Like, how did this little kid who came out of absolutely nowhere and who has hair that looks like a toupee get this successful, get this lucky? Like I mentioned, James and Tati were still very close during his rise to fame on the platform. They would hang out off camera, they would go to events together, go on trips together, you know, the typical friend stuff. But in spring of 2019, James would make a decision that would ruin that friendship. You see, James flew a guy out to Coachella with him and would eventually call him out saying he's a scammer and that he ruined Coachella for him. He later decided to go back to Coachella the following weekend with his friends to have a redo at the last weekend. But since he was getting mobbed in the VIP area, he wanted an artist pass and found out that a particular brand had some extras to hand out. So he landed a deal with that brand, Sugar Bear Hair, to do a very obvious sponsorship so he could be able to get an artist pass for free for the rest of the festival. For those of you who don't know, Sugar Bear Hair is a vitamin company, so a big competitor for Tati's brand Halo Beauty, another vitamin company. Tati felt betrayed by this because her best friend just did a sponsorship, a very obvious sponsorship for her biggest competitor. Tati would go on to make a series of Instagram stories basically just talking about how she felt underappreciated and just wasn't being acknowledged for all of her hard work within the community and just wasn't feeling appreciated. And surely the internet started doing what it did best and started doing some digging and they started to realize that she was referring to James in this moment. And then James caught wind of it and decided to make an apology but it really wasn't a sincere one and people caught on to that. And was it really an apology or was it a form of damage control? Who's to really say? And then Gabriel Zamora of Dramageddon 1 fame would come out and basically called Tati out for crying over vitamins and said that if she was really upset with James then call him out for it. Well, guess what kids? That's what she did. Picture it. It is the year of the Christian lore 2019 on the 10th of May when Tati would drop the career nuke known as Bye Sister. In that video, Tati would insert a clip of Gabriel Zamora calling her out for, again, crying over vitamins and telling her that if she felt upset about somebody treating her badly, then to call them out for it. And so that's what she did. She proceeded to call out James for being a bad friend. She once again claimed that she felt blindsided by James's sponsored post for Sugar Bear Hair, but also mentioned that it went beyond just vitamins. Granted, she did take the time to point out that she felt that it was wrong of him to shill out the calming vitamins that the brand had put out and was basically telling his teen tween audience to take glorified influencer melatonin. The other things she would go on to say though were wild, absolutely wild, to the point where these sentences that she would speak out into existence into the world would become memes that would get referenced time and time again. You all know the ones. Hmm. Sucking dick and cock. Tati would go on to say that James was a egomaniac drunk on power and had heard whispers of some of his bad actions and even witnessed some of them herself, but kind of turned a blind eye because it's just like, that's my friend. 
some of what she had heard were terrifying things such as him inappropriately messaging straight guys and even minors but there wasn't that much evidence for him messaging the minors but there was a lot of evidence for him messaging the straight guys hell she even witnessed him egregiously hit on a waiter at her birthday dinner you know the one sucking dick and cock he was becoming a menace to society and she had to put him in check or at least she wanted to put him in check and she wanted to call him out in this video because she had suspicions that he was behind the scenes working with different drama channels to potentially do some damage control like i had mentioned earlier with him making that sincere apology to her and was trying to like beat him to the punch so that way it could also better her reputation as well. Tati would go on to work with Tea Spill and the late Sam from here for the tea with giving them the exclusive scoop that this was going to be dropping and giving them some other behind the scenes scoop with things going on and whatnot that she didn't make known within her video and gave them like different receipts and whatnot and Tati would even go on to call out James's mother and basically tell her to like mother your child and take care of your child he's going crazy like what are you doing but then again he went on a class trip to Africa so they clearly came from money and have rich white people syndrome so I'm not shocked that she didn't keep her kid in check but Tati officially ended their friendship in that video and said bye to him clearly James was distraught by Tati saying bye to him I mean, he was out in Australia at the time and was four hours late to a meet and greet. I would have just canceled it at that point. And that's what I would have done. But you know what he was too busy doing? He was too busy doing that one chick in that one video where she's in like dancing and crying and whatnot. Was that a TikTok? Was that a I, I don't know. I'm old. I don't know these things. James would then go on to put out a apology video which didn't really have the best reception whatsoever because it was mostly him just being distraught and crying and just didn't make a lot of sense at all. He began hemorrhaging subscribers, losing a million of them in a day which was unheard of and in the process Tati was actually gaining subscribers. And in total, James would lose 3 million subscribers throughout the happenings of this event. The name I have yet to mention soon makes himself present in all of this. And that is the source of all evil from Dramageddon, Jeffree Star. Jeffree started giving his perspective on things over on Twitter, now ungraciously known as X. He would go on to say that James is a danger to society. Hell, he told James's own brother that James was a predator. If that ain't wild shit, I don't know what is. We'll talk more about Jeffrey's role in all this in a later video because that is a bit spoiler territory. We need stuff for story building and whatnot for the deep dive that I'm going to do onto breaking my silence. So we're going to be a little bit vague here, but I will at least give you guys that little bit of info for you all. Tati would also come out and make another video a few days after all this would happen and basically apologize to James for making the video. She didn't have any intentions on destroying his career, but just wanted to keep him in check, which a little late for that considering that she nuked his career with doing that video but go off sis i know that tati isn't a gemini but that is some of the most gemini shit ever and i can say this as a gemini tati was gaining subscribers out of james's expense and this was a very very hard pill for her to swallow and it just did not bode well for her at all it just did not sit well with her at all like she was crying about it the video like she was talking about how like if she could not post the video then she would like she didn't want any hate going towards him she just simply wanted him to be held accountable for his poor life decisions that's all that she really wanted to do and she tried to do it privately but had to do it publicly since the private method wasn't working. I remember being at my desk at my dad's house when this video dropped. 
yes I still remember that I kind of have like vague memories of what I was wearing that day but I remember watching that video that morning when it dropped and I was just like what's this about and then watching it and just being like absolutely gobsmacked and like what is happening and that is what the beauty community was thinking like everyone was just like what is happening this came out of nowhere and if you thought that it was wild seeing outside communities covering drama get in be prepared because even more outside communities were covering this and even more news sources were covering it and talking about it because this was becoming such a big thing and it was becoming such a big thing that even YouTube stepped in and told Tati to take the video down because it was making them look bad. Any and everybody was becoming aware of Sister Geddon and was creating memes like I mentioned earlier in this video. About a week would go by and James would drop another video titled No More Lies in which he would give his side of the story on things and talk about how his life has been since this nuke being dropped. He would call out Tati for not giving the full story and for painting him in a bad light and they wouldn't show that he did try to reach out to Tati before doing the Sugar Bear sponsorship and even showed proof of him showing love and support for Halo Beauty. He also touched on the fact that he just simply thought that he was flirting with like the straight guys like the waiter and whatnot which I mean in gay world some guys viewed sending a whole pic as flirting but time and place my dude and then the next day jeffrey would even go on to post a video called never doing this again in which he would talk about how he was going to stop interjecting himself in drama that he had no place in being involved in but what was so odd about him making this particular video was that the build up to him posting this video was that he was going on on social media talking about how he had all these receipts how he had all this evidence that could easily crush james and that he was going to air all of it out to expose him and then drops this video instead to do that and to put out a video just saying like I'm not doing that and I was in a dark place that's why I was saying all those things like honey you don't just try to ruin somebody's livelihood just because you were in a dark place. That's the source of all evil kind of shit right there happening. As time went by, James's reputation improved rather quickly and he gained the same amount of subscribers he lost in just a few months. Jeffrey continued being Jeffrey. Tati, on the other hand, wouldn't be the same after this. Sure, she wouldn't continue to be successful online, but you could really tell that this incident really bothered her and that she didn't really recover from it. People weren't necessarily turning on her, but they definitely weren't happy that she unintentionally nearly destroyed someone's career on the platform. This particular incident didn't really have that many big ripples that still affect the beauty community and the internet world in present day like Dramageddon 1 had happened with it but it's still very much something that's still relevant today and that people still reference and meme about to this day but it does serve as a massive stepping stone for the storyline that will progress within breaking my silence also referred to as Carmageddon or Dramageddon 3 and also the storylines behind James Charles and Jeffree Star. That is it for this story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There wasn't that much that really happened with this story but it's just such a messy thing but it also works again as like the precursor to an even bigger story with even bigger repercussions. Now hopefully it won't take me like three or four months to get the bringing my silence deep dive video up for you guys but i mean like i mentioned earlier holiday happened right after i did my drama get it one video and then my body gave up on me for a period of time and so there is also that and also there was a point in time when i was thinking about doing a deep dive into tossy westbrook before doing this video to kind of give like some extra backstory but i gave up on that because it just seemed pointless as i was like editing it and whatnot so i just was like nah we only do a deep dive on her and whatnot it, like i said it just seemed pointless and whatnot whereas with doing like deep dives into james jeffrey after we do deep dive on 
bringing my silence those those will make sense those would be worth it anyways i'm gonna go ahead and go and until i see you guys in my next video whenever that might be goodbye